around the seat. I know the pictures are pretty. should be here shortly, but he's coming down from a meeting in Pacifica. So he called me at the last minute, asked me if I'd introduce the subject. All the flack goes to Nick. <laughs> I was, those that don't know me, I was the assistant county manager and the parks director previously, and I'm also a resident on the coast. So I have quite an interest in this. So, um, just a name? little little history. Your name? Yes? Dave Holland. Dave Holland. Sorry. Just a little history. Um, I do want to acknowledge somebody out there. I saw Len Erickson, but I didn't get to say hi. Len and I started this mess back in late 2007, early 2008, when we were putting together a parks plan for the coast and it looked like it wasn't too safe to cross Highway 1. We contacted um, Dan Burton who was really the walkable community expert in the country. He came and looked at it, helped us get started. In 2009 we completed the first Highway 1 safety and mobility <coughs> improvement study and that one looked at essentially Frenchman's Creek north to, um, to Princeton. And then the, the second, and in that one was very similar to the one that just got finished recently. We looked at the whole road at that point, all the way from Devil Slide down, and then focused on that lower area, looking at what were, what were better designs for a road that was not designed well and was not designed for the volume of traffic or the development that was here on the coast to create safe crossings. And most of us live on the west side, or on the east side. Getting to the west side is difficult on a normal day. On a weekend, we just stay home. And um, was there a way to make that better? And so we looked at a number of things in that first study that included traffic circles and medians, and not much got done out of that first study other than all the input. We got a grant, to, which was always the intent following the, the first study, which was finished in 2009, and we got a second grant to go ahead and look at the rest of the highway all the way up to Devil Slide, from Princeton up to Devil Slide. That was when we really started to look at speeds and other <coughs> issues going through the various communities, Montero, Moss Beach, Miramar. And, um, that study was completed in 2012. Both have been adopted and approved by the Board of Supervisors. Both have had a tremendous amount of public input and meetings. And um, both phase one and phase two identified a series of pedestrian crossings, raised medians, left turn lanes, uh, ways to improve both the flow and the safety, both for vehicles and people. Um, in 2012, the county received a $1.5 million grant to begin the design based on all the feedback that had been given through those studies. Um, tonight, the all the alternatives that have been developed based on that feedback are in front of you. I know they're on the website. Uh, tonight, it's an opportunity to look at what was put into those alternatives and uh, have an understanding of the design behind them. And then at the end of the presentation that we're about to hear, um, provide comments. There are comment cards in the back in addition to um, providing your comments. But as I understand it, it's really to gain feedback on these designs and where these may not work at all from your standpoint. Um, so that being said, um, you know, I looked at them and I think 
We can certainly make it better here on the coast for us. We definitely can't change the weekends when everybody else wants to find how much we enjoy crossing the road. I mean, I don't think that's a subject we're going to be able to solve, but we can make it safer so we can cross the road, and that ought to be what tonight's about. Um, tonight with us we have, um, and these are the consultants that are going to make the presentation, Sarah Christensen and um, Samuel Sakow. And uh, if you want to ask a question, yes, Skip is his dad. <laughs> and many of you know Skip. Yes. And then James Hencap is here with um, the county. He's our planning ombudsman for the coast. And we have lots of issues now. I'm a citizen. I got issues too. <laughs> and um, and you all know Nick. And Nick can take all the flack. So with that, I'll turn it over to the consultants. <laughs> Who is Nick? Who is Nick? Nick is, um, Nick is Don Horsley's aide for the coast side. He's a good guy, can handle a lot. Hi, my name is Sarah Christensen. I'm with URS, and I'm the project manager for this project, the Highland Line Congestion and Safety Improvement Project. So today we're going to look at uh, all the alternatives that we put together. So we'll give a brief introduction of the project, talk about some of the project features that we're proposing, look at all the alternatives by location, and then we'll open it up to questions. So the goal of this project is really to provide safe access to the beaches uh, coastal areas and local communities along Highway 1. The project limits are Graywell Cove to the north and Marana Road to the south. It's also to improve the traffic congestion along segments of Highway 1 and really to provide safe crossings for residents and visitors to go from one side of Highway 1 to the other. Some of the project features that we have are uh, dedicated pedestrian crossings. We have two types. The first type is a rapid rectangular flashing beacon. This is a user activated device. It's a push button, so we would approach the intersection, push the button, and the beacons would start flashing. This uh, substantially improves uh, traffic yielding for pedestrians. We have an instructional video for you on how they work. So enjoy. Let's see if we get some sound here. So that's the first type of dedicated pedestrian crossing that we're looking at. The other one is called a hybrid beacon. This one's a little less common. Um, it's basically a pedestrian-activated device that's used at mid-block crossings. So um, 
Whereas the rapid rectangular flashing beacons that you just saw are typically used at uh, intersections. So the hybrid beacon is used at mid-block uh, where there's no intersection, say at Avenue Portola, Surfers Beach, or at Graybell Cove. So uh, this device, uh, when there's no pedestrian around, there's no lights flashing, and it just serves as you know, two-way, highway one traffic, moving just as normal as, as any day. And then um, when, it's, when a pedestrian approaches and pushes a button to activate it, yellow lights start flashing. So you can see the figure to the left explains um, what the drivers would see and what the pedestrians would see. So first, there's a flashing yellow. It turns into a solid yellow as if it's turning into like a red light, and then it turns into a red light. So the hybrid beacon is a pedestrian activated uh, signal for pedestrians used at mid-block locations. So we also have a video for that. will be followed by solid lights, which indicate that motors should stop if safe to do so. The solid yellow light will be followed by solid red lights. As usual, when seeing a red light, motors need to stop. The solid red light will be followed by alternating flashing red lights, which indicates that after first stopping, motors can proceed with caution through the intersection as long as there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. That explains how hybrid beacons work. Those are the two types. We're going to hold questions till the end. Can you, can you just say where you are this? You said that the there are two locations um, where we have mid-block crossings, where we're looking at the hybrid beacons as alternatives. Uh, they include Surfers Beach and Gray Whale Cove. Other project features include Raised medians. Raised medians provide a traffic calming effect by notifying the motorist that um, the conditions are changing. So it's, uh, it's really, you know, motorists who are coming into a more urbanized area from a rural area, like say into a town center, you know, they would come across a raised median and naturally slow down. They also provide uh, opportunities for landscaping. We're also looking at adding some highway lighting. There's some existing highway lighting out there, uh, some of which uh, doesn't work. Uh, highway lighting has been proven to enhance the safety substantially, especially for pedestrians. So we're, we're definitely looking at adding highway lighting at, at the race medians to make them more visible to motorists, as well as at the um, pedestrian crossing to enhance the safety. Next, we're going to go through the alternatives by location. We're going to start from, from Marada Road in the south. Here's a map of the overall project area. We're going to zoom right in. Marada Road. <coughs> so here at Marada Road, we're proposing a dedicated, <coughs> excuse me, dedicated pedestrian crossing at the intersection with the rapid rectangular flashing beacon. This location, basically there's beach access on the west side. Uh, this would provide a safe access across Highway 1 for pedestrians. We'd also be adding some signage to enhance the safety for a pedestrian's crossing. We're going to move on. And these are all along the wall over here. So you feel free to take a look after the presentation in more detail. So moving up the coast to Surfers Beach, this is a mid-block crossing. So there's no intersection there presently. And we're proposing two alternatives. 
One is the hybrid beacon. So that would be the push button device that would um, basically have the uh, signalized intersection just for the pedestrians, activated by the push button. The other one is the rectangular gravel flashing beacons, <coughs> as well as uh, enhanced signage for the crossing, uh, advanced warning signs, and that sort of thing. Moving along, we have Ecuador to Marine and Cypress Avenue. So here we're looking at um, where you're entering Moss Beach from the south. We're looking at adding some median markers, which would uh, provide a similar uh, benefit as a raised median. Uh, which would basically slow folks down who are entering Moss Beach. We also have a raised median just south of the Marine Boulevard uh, intersection. So that would basically signalize motorists, hey, the, uh, we're going from rural to urban, slow down, we're entering a town center. In addition to that, we're proposing a dedicated pedestrian crossing at Cypress Avenue, as you can see with the rapid rectangular flashing beacon. Next we have two alternatives here at the Virginia Avenue and California Avenue location. The first alternative is having a dedicated production crossing at both the Virginia and California Avenue intersections. And the rest of uh, the improvements is basically to keep the left turn pockets the same and the same configuration as they are today. Um, this alternative would uh, basically add some yield lines at the uh, where the motorists should stop for the pedestrians and some enhanced signage. And the second alternative is very similar. So it's a consolidated pedestrian crossing at California. So in this case, as you can see, um, it's basically elongating the left turn pocket onto California Avenue. So if you're traveling in the northbound direction and making the left on California Avenue, the left turn pocket would be much longer, which would provide more storage capacity for motorists. And similarly, going in the southbound direction, you'd have a longer left turn pocket going to Vermont Avenue. Now what this would do is it would channelize the movement and um, eliminate some of the left turn movements, which would enhance the safety in the area. This would also uh, include changing the Virginia Avenue intersection to a right in, right out, so you would not be able to make a left onto Highway 1 from Virginia Avenue, you can only make a right. So if you wanted to make a left, you'd have to either go back to California or Vermont. <coughs> Next is 16th Street. Uh, we have proposed a dedicated pedestrian crossing right at 16th Street. Excuse me, 16th Street. And you can see connecting to the coastal trail here. Um, this location would provide rapid rectangular flashing beacons and enhance the safety for the pedestrians crossing this area. <coughs> Next is 7th Street. 7th Street, we have two raised medians proposed, one on each side. We have it one near 9th Street and one right near 7th Street. So this would really um, provide a lot of traffic calming in this area. In addition to that, we would have a dedicated pedestrian crossing on the south side of the 7th Street intersection. Everything else in the area would be the same. So the second alternative, I'm sorry. Going back. Okay. Sorry about that. 
moving, moving north to Second Street, this one has the two alternatives. So this one's similar in a way that it has the two raised medians. So entering and exiting this area, you would have the two raised medians, which would calm the traffic substantially. In addition to that, we have a dedicated pedestrian crossing on the north side of the intersection. And then the striping would be the same as existing. Second alternative is similar. Basically moves the dedicated pedestrian crossing to the south side of the intersection. In this case, uh, we would look at changing the left turn lane instead of having a single left turn lane into the restaurant and a single left turn lane onto Second Street, providing a two-way left turn lane in the middle, in between First Street and Second Street. <coughs> and the last location we're looking at is Graywell Cove. This is uh, the second location where we're looking at mid-block crossing. Uh, so as you can see, we have a, a dedicated pedestrian crossing with two alternatives. We have the hybrid beacon, as well as the rap rapid re rectangular flashing beacons. In addition to that, uh, you know, the, the location today is just two-lane highway. If you were to make a left turn into the parking lot, you'd have to sit in the traveled lane and wait for your turn to make a left. So this project would enhance the safety by adding a left turn lane, which would be, uh, as you can see right here. Let's see. Zoom. In addition to that, we're looking at adding a acceleration lane for folks who are leaving the parking lot and going southbound. So this would require a little bit of pavement widening on the east side, and we could we would do a lot of enhancements and um, improvements to provide a really safe pedestrian crossing just north of the entrance to the parking lot. And then, as you can see, there's a pathway that we would provide along the west side of Highway One that would connect back to uh, the Graywell Cove beach entrance. So that's the last location, and we have the questions. <laughs> I think actually the last one you saw is probably what I think is the best one for Grey Whale Cove. And it does, it, it, just to emphasize, it does have a flashing red light as well, which I, I used to be in the Sheriff's Department and I was a traffic officer one time, so that to me is actually the best. But one of the things about this is that uh, uh, if we can get all these, first of all, this is for a, this is a process of uh, public outreach, planning, permitting, then we've got to go look for the funding for it. But if we're able to, well, one of the reasons we did this in the first place is it's been a process that's been going on for about four years or so. And I, maybe some of you have participated in some of those earlier studies, but that, I know, like Len Erickson, I know you did, and, uh, and a few about, okay, other people did as well. So it's kind of a culmination of that. Um, it, and, I, and I have had people, you know, send me messages and say, why don't we have uh, a walkway over the top of the highway or go underneath? Well, to do that is hugely expensive. You have to have more property. You have to have an ADA compliant. And you also have to be considerate of the fact that this blocks the view corridor. So those things are, we didn't really look at that. They were really pretty much, uh, we didn't think it was possible. The other thing about the things that you've seen tonight is that we have to go talk to Caltrans because they're essentially, you know, if I had my druthers of things that I would do, but we have to make sure that they will permit it. So we have you know, sort of a tentative idea that most of these things can be done. We would have, I would have liked to have more um, center islands, and I would have liked it to be more vegetated, but you know, they, it is their highway, and so we have to be respectful of what they want. So essentially, the idea now is for, you know, we want to get as much feedback from you as possible. I'm not going to answer the questions that consultants are, so 
We just have to be nice to them. And then, and then we're going to take down all of your comments as well before anything gets uh, finalized. So, by the way, this is not this is not it's some. So it's possible that some of these uh, proposals will change based on uh, your input and also making sure that uh, that whatever it is is something that's possible with your calculator. So, with that. Oh, he's going to call Unless you want to call me for it. No, you do. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I want to, so we'll just call people up one at a time uh, and solve the field each question. So, one, two, one, two, three. First time using microphones. Um, I just, I feel like I have a slightly different impression of the coast side than maybe you do because you talk about medians for going from work. Uh, rural areas to urban areas, and I'm just wondering, do you really see Moss Beach as an urban area? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not <laughs> urban. Yeah. And then also, I just want to comment about Surfers Beach. Uh, I go there pretty much every day, and I watch people jaywalk, and they're literally sometimes 15 to 20 feet from the actual crosswalk where there's a light. Yeah. So. I agree it's dangerous, although it works most of the time, but I just, I don't know how realistic it is to put a mid-block crossing and expect people to walk over to it because you have a constant line of cars parked and moving all the way from Coronado Light to the Harbor Light, crossing to Sam's, crossing to Surfers, and I mean it's maybe good that some of the people who want to be safe will go to that crossing, but I don't think the majority of people will. Uh, and then, and just so everyone knows, we'll, we'll limit. Uh, we're gonna, based on the attendance, um, we're gonna try to keep everything to three minutes, uh, which is pretty standard. Lisa, why don't you? median refuge islands that allow pedestrians to cross one lane of traffic at a time in the direction of Can you speak up, please? I'll try. How's that? Watch better. Pedestrian median refuge islands. Uh, so uh, I was sold on the concept. And I would prefer to walk across the highway one lane at a time. Uh, it's a safe place to stop in the middle and then you wait for a break in the traffic in the other direction. It's much less intrusive than making everybody stop for me to toddle across the street. And, um, and even if it was determined that you still needed these lights for some people, at least you have the choice. Uh, you know, oh, I can do this one lane at a time. I don't need to push the button. So, um, you know, it was a big feature in the Highway 1 study. So it's disappointing not to see that here in any of the crossing treatments. Um, Second point is in Moss Beach, where the traffic calming, where, where are the traffic calming raised medians that we heard so much about? This is the one town where the speed limit is 50 miles an hour, and we're told you can't lower that to 45 until the cars slow down. So we, so we had traffic calming uh, features talk to us in the Highway 1 study, and part of that was the raised median. So I'm wondering why that was left out, uh, whether, um, you tried to put it in, and Calvin said no, or whether it just decided it was, I just, um, was disappointing not to see that. And the third point, um, once again, Moss Beach, we need some left to merge lanes to help people get on the highway. All the other towns have either a traffic light or some left merge lanes, Montero has that. Moss Beach doesn't have, it has two, but they're on these two little cul-de-sacs, so it doesn't really um, help hardly anybody. And, particularly at Cyprus. A left merge, northbound left merge lane at Cyprus. This street is a bottleneck street that has to accommodate the a neighborhood of Pillar Ridge, 850 people, Seal Cove, I don't know how many people there, plus the distillery, restaurant, other coastal visitors all have to get out that street. And um, people are saying, they say to me, oh, we need a traffic light there. Well, hey, short of a traffic light, a left merge lane there will make a big difference. That's good. So the first thing you mentioned was um, having pedestrian refuge 
and the media. So those are beneficial when you're when you're crossing multiple lanes of traffic. So say it's a four lane highway, two lanes in each direction. So really our approach for this project, because there's only two lanes, the less amount of time that you're crossing, the better. So having the rectangle of rapid flashing beacons or the uh, hybrid beacons, it's basically getting you across as quickly as possible, whereas um, having a raised median, you would potentially have to wait you know, several minutes in the median for the but it's, other but it's, Yeah, it's getting the pedestrian across faster, but it's, it's very, uh, you know, the cars are having to stop like every four tenths of a mile. Yeah. You know, really. So I mean, yeah, it's all down to the roads. The roads got wider. All yeah. yeah. And most of us do cross highways. What's what? One lane at a time. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the right, like so, the so what we'll do is we'll call people up individually. I, I think it'll be best for both time and to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak and understand everything. If we um, try to keep the dialogue, the back and forth, um, to a minimum. But so, would it be helpful to do an intersection or crossing by crossing? Start from the north, go south, or south to north? Yeah, yeah, maybe we could just hit like any issues with each one. It might be best. Yeah, general questions. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think it, it generally, uh, I mean, general questions would probably be best. So, right, if you turn right around, right behind you, there are speaker cards that give you an opportunity to be very detailed, uh, that allow you to be very detailed and specify which location. And what we'll be able to do is take those comments, go back, review them, sit down, talk to the consultants about them, and uh, it'll allow you to comment on more projects in more detail than what you'd be able to do. Uh, in the three minutes up here. But how would there be any interaction at that point? Yeah. So we'll, we'll take, write that down the same thing. So put, put your, con yes, yeah, so you can leave with us, put your contact on it, and we'll work to respond um, accordingly. But then there's no benefit of the group. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. but if, yeah. Can we just talk? Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. like if we really, really want to agree that we need an island after just crossing one <coughs> fifty mile per hour road, it would be great to have a safe place to stop and we love that whether yes. you or studies say two or not. Yes. You know, we like to yeah. <laughs> We have a show of hands on a, a, a refuge island. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, here's, I understand. So, if everyone gets up and says, you know, look, we need raised medians at this location to act as a refuge, then it's going to be clear that uh, that's something that we need to consider, right? Because we're here to hear what you guys want. Uh, you can call for a sensitive meeting right now. Yeah, you can just ask how many people save a lot of time. time. <laughs> Hi, I, I've been here at every session um, since this has been going on, and I want to say that the same comments that are being made tonight by many of you have not been addressed. I did a lot of research before I came here tonight, and I looked at the website, and it's interesting that they want us to gather tonight to discuss alternatives to Highway 1. But the problem is, I, well, I live in Montero, so I, this thing is so huge that I studied Montero and Moss Beach. There are, there's only one alternative that was presented in the one, two, three, four, five, six areas in Moss Beach and Montero. And there are, they are their alternatives. They are not our alternatives. It is clear that they have not been listening to us. And what I want to say is, from what I've seen, um, you know, I, I counted all of the signs and all of the, you know, the beacons and all that stuff. There's a total of 51 signs. That's 51 new signs. Six pedestrian crossings. 12 street lights, 12 flashing beacons, 12 stop bars, and this is all within a 1.7 mile stretch of our highway. Um, 
they talk about traffic calming, but really what this is going to result in is complete and total frustration for the people that are commuting. The intent of this project, and this is not only on the coast, this project is a template in every city, in every state, in our entire country, this is a template. And, the, and the, their intent is to get us out of our cars and to have as many obstacles for us. And they have also suggested that, well, there's going to be bike lanes on the east and the west side of Highway 1 also. And they've also suggested that we should all get on our bikes as an alternative commute. And that's all I have to say. I wish, really, that you guys would listen. But I don't feel good about what is going to happen on our coast side. Thank you. Uh, so, and, so I, I understand what you're saying. So I do want to just clarify, when you were listing out the projects, you said 1.7 miles. Mm -hmm. Can you specify which 1.7? Because the entire yes, project covers uh, 7 between, miles. Between uh, Montero at 2nd Street and uh, Moss Beach at Cypress. <clears throat> it's 1.7 miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, I didn't have time to do the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question? Yes, please. Yeah, you know, please, oh, please so, come on up. Um, I, I can do this probably without the microphone if you want. Okay. Um, thanks very much for doing all this research in this project. We really appreciate it. Um, I actually wanted to know if there was any data to show that one or over the other type of crossing signage was safer, either for cars or pedestrians. I wasn't sure. My guess would have been that the hybrid beacon was safer, but I wondered if there was actually you know, studies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we did look at the effectiveness of these crossings and the uh, hybrid beacon, uh, when you're talking about percentage of yielding for a pedestrian, um, basically if it's just a pedestrian crossing the highway, uh, it's about 20% yielding that you'll get from motorists. Uh, the rapid rectangular flashing beacon that we talked about enhanced that to 88%, which is a huge safety improvement. And the, hy and the hybrid beacon is 100% because it's a, it's a stop by the country. So people pay attention. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, and then I, just, I do just want to clarify one thing, and that is that. Um, we're here, uh, so James is here, James from Planning and Building, uh, is writing down everyone's comments. And so we're looking to gather your comments and uh, see what a common theme is amongst what everyone is saying. And we will then take that and work to incorporate these into those designs. So as you guys see, there are alternatives over here to, apparently my three minutes are up. Yeah, my three minutes are up. Um, uh, so, 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 so there are alternatives, and furthermore, and furthermore, what we hear from you guys are a form of alternatives. So, what you see here, it's not a what you see is what you get. So we're not here telling you guys, hey, pick one or the other. What we're here is saying, hey, these are the designs that have been developed from the community developed Highway 1 Safety and Mobility Study. So I, I was here during uh, several of those meetings where the community members told everyone what they wanted. And so these were common themes from the general community. So what we are trying to do is gather your feedback because we want to take further feedback to incorporate them into this design. So, you know, these designs are very much amendable. So that's why we want to hear from you guys. Can so, yes, people ma make comments here? Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you guys are doing more talking. The hands up here, nobody's getting the so, chance so to talk. It, Let so people talk. I'm sorry, but you're, you're frustrating us. 
I mean, I'm really sorry about this because you know I don't. I try to work with you. I am Beverly Garrity from Montero, and I took a look at all of the alternatives um, from Great Whale all the way down. So I have some feedback here um, as a sidebar note. Um, although the grassy you knoll medians uh, or just safe medians were developed for two, three, four lane roads um, for us, the people who live here on the coast side, um, we uh, have a hard time crossing Highway 1 without stopping. So quite often we are stopping on those narrow painted lines while the cars are whizzing by us. And especially in the um, more public um, areas like the beach areas, and we do need uh, a place to pause uh, so that the traffic can keep flowing, we can pause, and then continue on. Um, and that's our reality. So uh, Graywell Cove, I'd like to address Graywell Cove. In the very beginning, we were talking about a west side trail from that uh, Graywell Cove parking area to the beach to the proposed Devil's Slide Trail. I didn't see that on your, uh, on your plans, that west side trail uh, when you cross from the parking lot to the other side and attempt to walk all the way up to the parking lot for Devil's Slide. And people are trying to do that and it's really dangerous. They're trying to bike, they're trying to uh, roll the strollers with the little kids in it um, when the parking lot of Devil's Slide is full. Um, Montero, um, does the grassy median at First Street prevent southbound cars from turning left onto First Street? Uh, there are residents there, they do need to get home. And um, that would be very awkward not to be able to turn into First Street. Um, I prefer alternative one uh, for safe access. Um, there are pros and cons to each of those alternatives. But I prefer that for safe access um, because you can stop midway. Um, and also the northbound cars have more visual response time coming down that blind incline um, going north uh, to stop for pedestrians. Um, also the 7th Street crosswalk seems unnecessary. Um, uh, from the very beginning, um, the person who came here to talk about <coughs> roundabouts was pushing 7th Street. And our reality is most people cross at 8th Street. That's our hub. So I suggest the crosswalk be moved to the south side of 8th Street with a trail, a walking trail, on the west side of Highway 1 to the beach. Okay, Moss Beach. Um, Moss Beach is our most dangerous area, I think. I'm pretty sure I would bet on statistics showing you that's where most of the accidents are and, and the mortalities. Um, so I prefer alternative two um, it, because it looks like it closes off some of those accesses to and from Highway 1. Looks like the better option. Um, also the grassy median uh, by Virginia Avenue where you're closing off the, the access to Virginia. Can I just finish up? Um, Right um, and I suggest that you use one of those roundabouts at the California Winky Way Highway 1 intersection to slow the traffic and increase the efficient movement at this very complex, very dangerous intersection. And one more Moss Beach issue. Um, yes, the, uh, I want to support that comment on the, the Cypress Avenue. Suggest I suggest um, support for turning onto Highway 1, not off of Highway 1. Um, from Cypress Avenue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Catherine Slater Carter. And, and for those who want to speak, I suggest you stand here and I'll hand you the microphone so that we can do this in an orderly fashion instead of getting cold. I hope you don't mind. Um, makes it a little more efficient. Uh, Catherine Slater Carter um, from Montero. Um, some of these uh, crossings are on blind corners, like 16th Street, and I think it's, you're going to have to have some kind of warning lights for people who are zipping along. Um, there is a lot of, a lot of traffic, uh, pedestrian traffic crossing there, 
And we do need a, actually a trail on the west side there so people can get up. Um, but one of the questions that came to me is how were these locations picked? Some of these locations I've never seen anyone crossing yet. Um, you, have, you have your uh, road um, uh, markers for the amount of traffic that goes, but how do you know where people really cross? I think that's an important thing. For instance, the idea of moving the crosswalk from the north side of 2nd Street to the south side, nobody crosses on the south side because the bus stop is on the north side. That's where there's room for people to stand and room for, for people to wait while they're crossing. So that one makes the most sense is to have it on the north side. Um, who's going to pay for the lighting, the installation, and the maintenance over time to keep these things looking decent? And what about the folks who live along Highway 1 who suddenly have all this light in their house? I, I think that's a, a fairly logical concern, and I, I think if that hasn't been addressed yet. Um, I agree with that we need access merge lanes on Cyprus. Um, and I think the folks who, if you're going to cut off access and change the access patterns, the people who live on the streets that will have the increased traffic should be warned. Because there's a lot of people who all of a sudden they're going to have a jillion cars going in front of their quiet neighborhood and they're going to be going, what happened? I, I appreciate the fact that everyone is here, that we're, you're able to have the meeting here tonight, but this is not very many people represented um, for, for the entire post site. Um, the 16th Street turn, which is on the blind curve, are you going to be changing the left turn lanes or are you going to be leaving those exactly the same and just putting the uh, traffic pedestrian crossing across there. They would, they would remain. Okay. Um, let me see. And then the beacons are bi-directional. So mm -hmm. we did look at the stopping site distance around the curve. So motorists coming around the curve wouldn't be able to see flashing beacon on the right side, but they would definitely be able to see the one on the left side. Okay, okay. And um, I agree, we absolutely need a west side trail on double slide uh, for Braywell Cove. I've seen people walking on that narrow six inch median in high traffic, and it's pretty scary both for the drivers and um, I guess the city people are used to it, but um, it's pretty scary for us drivers. And yeah, I think it is important to remember that every single one of us commutes up and down that road every single day pretty much. and so. There needs to be respect to the traffic as well. Over more out or not, I have a telephone here holding the microphone close enough. Um, I have a whole bunch of comments, and I'm going to try and run through these really fast. First of all, most of what you've seen here is a false dichotomy. Go look it up. It, it, they, they present two choices uh, that, that they've picked and ignored uh, what the community suggested. And the most obvious one there is the community was strongly in favor of the center mediums, particularly at Surfers Beach. And that's the one thing they're writing off as, as unacceptable. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the only acceptable solution at Surfers Beach. You cannot put up any kind of pole there. We have a precious view from El Granada out over Half Moon Bay, and you're going to put these stupid poles right in the middle to hang lights off of them. That is totally unacceptable. And we also have a very precious night view with the moon reflecting off of the bay, and any of this crap is going to royally screw that up. So, you know, expect this to be tied up with the Coastal Commission for years and years and years if you do anything other than the center media. And, and that also applies to street lighting. No night street lighting within sight of the ocean, period. Um, the, and, and as far as the, the labeling the parking lot there, you better talk to the property owner before you label that a parking lot. The, the whole thing may be reconfigured, and if you put the crossing where you think the parking lot's going to be, you may uh, end up in trouble uh, years down the road. Um, that anything that stops traffic needs storage lanes. That's why Coronado is fundamentally broken. Frenchman's Creek is fundamentally broken. Signals were rushed in on both of those without proper studies. And the lack of storage lanes there is why the morning commute is a nightmare. 
Uh, and any traffic engineer can explain storage lanes, but apparently these kind of planners don't know the concept. Um, it, and uh, it, I want to mention too many signs, period, way too many signs. Um, and, and any of these, these uh, push-button control things need to be rigged so that they won't change too often. But then the problem is people won't wait for them. So it's self-defeating. You can't win either way. And if you, if you keep stopping traffic over and over again, it's going to take an hour and a half to get from Montero to 92, which I don't think anybody here wants. That's what they want. Uh, well, yeah, we know that. Uh, for those who didn't hear the previous speaker said that's what they want. Um, and, and by the way, uh, there was a woman killed by a sheriff's deputy at the signal at Capistrano. So signals don't really do anything except give people a false sense of security. The pedestrian is still responsible for their own safety. And under the California Vehicle Code, a jaywalker has only one right. And that one right is to not get hit by a car. The cars do not have to stop or slow down for jaywalkers. It's just not in the law. Uh, and, you know, this is a highway. This is not El Camino Real. It's a highway. And it's our only route. Um, and this is officially a semi-rural area. People can use the word urban all they want. This is not an urban area. It's officially semi-rural by county policy, by state law. It is semi-rural. You can't urbanize it this way. Um, I'll try and write up the rest of my comments before I leave, but I'm, I'm just, you know, you can tell that I'm really annoyed that this is a plan to ruin what attracts so many of us to the coast side. And this is, you are not going to turn this into an open reality. You have to maintain the rural character of the coast side. And 51 signs doesn't do that. Stupid flashing lights. Go look at the the, the uh, light, the, the flashing light that flashes 24 hours a day uh, on Capistrano across from the Monster Hotel, and nobody around. And this light is, is is ruining the night view with these bright yellow flashing lights. We don't want night lighting here. We like our night sky. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question actually. It would be nice to know how many accidents, vehicle accidents and pedestrian accidents have occurred in this entire stretch. It would give us a, some sort of historical perspective and see, you know, which are the dangerous intersections and so forth. It would have been really nice to have that information. The other uh, thing that um, I'd like to ask why um, there's a new kind of, it's not new really, but Caltrans uses this pedestrian crossing which is embedded into the roadbed that flashes when a person comes up, you push the button, and the roadbed actually turns yellow and red, which I think it's a lot easier for the uh, drivers to see, and I didn't see that in one of your alternatives. And um, the other thing is, uh, there is actually a semi-trail from uh, Gray Whale Cove to Devil Slide on the eastern side. And I think maybe the state is going to be developing that, but there's a road already that goes up there, and there's a trail that basically almost takes you all the way up to uh, Devil Slide. So maybe somebody can investigate uh, to open that area, which this way people don't have to cross at uh, Great Mill Cove. And also, thank you so much for having this meeting. I know it's a hot topic. <laughs> I'm Steve Schneider, I'm from Montero, and I just want to second the comment about uh, the crossing at 2nd Street. Uh, the north uh, crossing, uh, which is alternative one, I think, uh, makes sense. The south crossing doesn't, and I will speak to it personally. I've almost been run over several times. People coming north on Highway 1 will make that turn into 2nd Street. There's no space there for anybody to duck. I've had to kind of jump off the road a little bit in order to keep from being hit. Uh, so uh, that uh, curve there just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, alternative one is the only one that's really safe. And uh, so I would suggest that you look at that one closely. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm uh, James Barnes. I'm from Montero. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention a couple of things about some of the some of the plants. I'd like to support um, anything you can do to calm traffic in uh, Moss Beach, and that includes if we're talking about raised medians. Uh, you know, it's yes, it's a two-lane road, but it's very very wide, and so it's a long way for people to cross there. And you know, it could be converted into a four-lane road. I guess I mean, that's why it's so wide. But uh, at any rate, medians there would be helpful. Also, uh, the hybrid lights. I think you might want to consider putting one in at the California area to have traffic actually stop, get that 100%, and maybe at the second street uh, up on the end of uh, Montero as well. Uh, those two areas are particularly difficult. And uh, you know, I have students, I, I teach at the high school uh, in Tappan Bay, I've had a student hit here in Moss Beach. Um, my son who goes to uh, Cunha, or did, um, he and his friends, they pile on their bicycles from Montero, and they ride all the way to Cunha. And the most dangerous part of their trip is crossing somewhere to get access to the, to the coastal trails and the airport road and so on. And I have them cross at California Street. That's the best line of sight, but that's where people have been hit as well. So that area right there, is, I think, is very, very key. Um, so uh, the only last comment I have was um, also seconding third thing or fourth thing, there needs to be some kind of access from the Great Whale Cove parking lot up to the tunnel. So that's just got to happen. I tried to do that on my bike one day. I almost died. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dan Haggerty, El Granada. Uh, I want to say that, uh, I want to be very clear, that I am for a safer highway one and a vibrant coastal community life for everybody that lives here and for all the visitors that go out of the way to, to come and enjoy this beautiful area that we have. <clears throat> um, the more you, uh, you know, I, I got a comment, but I really have a burning question. How, you hit the button, how long is that light going to turn red for? How long will Highway 1 be stopped exactly. while mm -hmm. there's one or two um, but how long do they have to wait? How long before it actually turns red once you hit the button? And then how long will it be red as we cross the total the time? Cap. How long will Highway 1 be prevented from flowing for each pedestrian crossing? That's my question. You know what I mean? I can go ahead. It's a simple calculation. And depending on the crossing, they take an average travel time or a person time. They take a mile per hour times the distance, and you get per location. It would be a different calculation for each one. And I, 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 I can't do that off the top of my head. Okay, no, no. At this, you know, at this point, it was trying to get it out there and get people to look at it. Okay, so um, I just want to make the comment: the more you stop the traffic from working well, the more our community will be impacted. I do not believe that all of these should be built. I am in favor of a test, you know, model, but. Too much. It's just too much in one shot. Um, <clears throat> I think that we should uh, find out which ones are most popular and, and, and try, you know, a, a couple. Um, we've all seen a tremendous increase in, in traffic congestion recently since the tunnel opened, and some of us, you know, feel like we're prisoners in our own home right. um, because we can't get out. And, you know, I love the kids that drive ride their bike from Montero to, uh, and I sympathize with them because I know, that, hey, it's it's tough getting across that road. Um, but you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I I have always been uh, a big fan of pedestrian um, tunnels, underground pedestrian tunnels. They're all throughout Golden Gate Park, which I rode my mountain bike in as a kid. Um, uh, I know down by Big Sur, underneath Highway 1, there's, a, there's a, like a seven foot radius galvanized pipe that goes right on it. It's just, it's so peaceful. You don't have to look. You can stop and talk. You can, you know, it, there's, there's just no distraction. It's just the ultimate in safety is a, a, a separation of grade. Um, I personally prefer not against over crossings. Although uh, under crossings, you know, I'm, I'm seven feet. Uh, this figure, figure of ceiling seven feet, you just, you're just walking down seven feet, and that's it. If you go up, you're going to have to walk up like 16 feet. Um, 
So underground, I've, I've uh, and, and Bill Bat or Marin County did a study on, on tunnels and trails. Uh, I think it was back in 2001, I was up there a couple weeks ago, Cal Park Tunnel, which is a very popular tunnel getting the commuters that ride the bike to uh, Larkspur Landing, uh, the ferry terminal. Very successful. And uh, anyway, I, I would just like to see at some point, I know it's, I feel like at some point in time to have some kind of a uh, move for a feasibility study for just one, we'll pick the west, best place and one. Now, the last thing I have to say is that the Greywell Cove, you're, you're decreasing the amount of parking spaces. I guess you're increasing the flow into it. So that's something to think about. Um, I would consider a no left turn sign here at certain hours, you know, when it's almost full. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jim Bennington. I live here in Montero. I've been here a long time. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. I agree on the access. You know, we only need one or two spots to get across the highway. Don't need, I've never seen people line up on 16th, 2nd, and 8th, or 7th, or whatever, to get across. Uh, the other problem with, with these crosswalks is it applies there some place to go. And so one of the things we haven't talked about is how to be impacted here, though, especially down closer to the road. And so, uh, you know, I, I think on the weekends, if people see a crosswalk on 2nd Street, there's no place to park down on the highway. They're going to come to the neighborhood, and that's going to impact our parking here. And so I think we should be careful about how much we're concerned about getting access to the community across the highway and also consider the alternative. So uh, I'm going to limit my comments to Ron Carrick, but that's, that's, that's what I think. <coughs> Hello, I'm Dave Olson. Uh, I'm Andrew Nava, formerly uh, in Montero, right above Highway 1. Um, I, um, the Second Street crossing, we absolutely have to have that. It's just heavily used. I crossed Highway 1 myself all up and down the mid coast uh, on, on foot and on my bicycle. Medians in the center are what we need. Surfers Beach, don't put it in the Just put it in the Let people go halfway. That's what they're going to do anyway. Um, and second, don't even think about a two-way left turn lane. The volume of left turn lane uh, going south into Montera and going north into the restaurant is way too high for a two-way left turn lane. It's just <laughs> uh, acceleration lanes make all the difference in the world. Uh, so in Cyprus, coming north, there's a couple of other places. Uh, I would not put the crosswalk in California. The real traffic is at the market. Put it in the market. Put it in Virginia. And I would not cross close off those streets. Uh, so uh, flow of traffic is real important. Um, I'm on Mid Coast Community Council. A lot of people come up and say, I'm really worried that this is going to be traffic. Uh, they all want safety, but they're really worried about the traffic being competing. Uh, I do not like the hybrid overhead. <coughs> They're, they're a view, they're just destroyed. The view. Uh, plus, they have the same problem as a traffic light. They stay red when nobody's there. That impedes the traffic. The other one, I think, is a good idea. Hi, I'm Bill Keo from West Beach. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, I'm going to try and uh, just keep to some of the things that I mentioned, but let me just first say that when I sat on the Lincoln Coast Community Council and we went through a lot of these meetings, it was clear that most of the people talked about some kind of a center island so they don't have to put up one lane at a time. And I was sort of taken aback by the comment you made about four lanes, okay, two lanes it isn't. I have been crossing a California street for going on 30 years. And the problem is, is when you're on the side and you've got traffic going in both directions, you have to wait till it's clear on both of them and you can be sure to get over or as someone said, you're standing on a double yellow line in the middle. So you need an island to do that and you press one at a time and it's very safe and you really don't need any kind of hybrid light or full stop. Second thing, in most of the meetings we went to, 
it was just absolutely, I'd say most of the public was very loud about not having any more traffic lights. I took a lot of heat, I still do from some people, about the one at the South Border. And I agree that when they're shooting out of the tunnel at 50 miles an hour, you got 450 feet, that's a very dangerous place not to have something. Although we fought hard to get an overpass and it would never get by an overpass, it would never get by the Coastal Commission. So quickly, um, everything that's been said before me about traffic calming um, uh, things for, to slow down traffic, especially in West Beach, I don't know why we have to have 50 and everybody else from Devil's Slide down to the airport is at 45. I, I feel like we have a target on us if we live in West Beach, so that needs to be fixed. Um, the other thing I want to say is uh, uh, the storage lane for when you want to go south. Um, when you go through Moore's Beach, like in California, if you want to turn, you have to wait for both traffic uh, lanes to be able to get out there. If you could cross one, wait, and then go south again. But then you have a problem that there's people that want going north that want to go down to the uh, Marine Reserve. So you need to somehow alternate that. One street, you can have a, a storage lane to go south, another one you can have a storage lane to to go across. You, you know what I'm saying. Uh, one other last thing, because I, I don't want to run out of time, but 16th Street, Carlos Street, um, across from the Montero Water and Sanitary District, uh, where you have the, the trail crossing. You're on a curve. The curve is uh, going upgrade as you're going north on Highway 1. You come on Carlos Street, it is blind until you're less than two car lengths away, either because of the weeds are overgrown, the curve, the, the whole setup. If you were to take, there's a little, like a point out on the map over here, there's a dirt road that some people have driven off road on that takes you over to 16th Street because they don't want to go out and get back on there. Had Caltrans done that right, they wouldn't have that double left lane there. They would have had people turn up to 16th and Carlos would have entered at 16th. You're further down the curb, the grade is now going down, your visibility is much longer. It gives you more time to react. It's just a horribly designed intersection um, putting the crossing there, uh, it's, it still will be a problem, but not as bad as if, if it's pushed down further and you don't have Carlos Street and then 16th Street, as well as the left-hand turn lanes. Anyway, I'll, I'll write them off and mail them in here. You really need to take a close look at that. My name is Sid Young, I'm from Moss Beach, and I know you, Nicholas, but are you guys all from Caltrans or the county? Nobody's from Caltrans? Okay. Um, I just want to point this out to you. There's a lot of traffic that comes down Cypress Avenue, and a lot of times you try to turn to go north. There's no turn lane there that you could pull into, and there's a lot of northbound traffic that, that's coming up Highway 1. So you have this nice nifty left turn lane into a slow street, but you don't have any place for the um, people leaving Cypress to go north to turn out safely. And uh, there's a culvert right here, so people try to kind of cut the corner and they can't because it's dipped down and there's a big, big pothole here too. But um, my main concern really is that um, Cypress Avenue, you probably don't know this, is the main thoroughfare for all of Seal Cove, part of the Marine Reserve um, where the steps are, and all of um, the mo uh, excuse me, manufactured home park that's down Airport Boulevard away. And there's supposedly going to be another big project down there called Big Wave. 
that's a lot of people trying to get out onto this street. And what you'll notice here is when people can't turn left, it backs way up down Cypress, because you can't turn right either since there's a big pothole there and only there's no lane to turn right. So that was all I wanted to say. Carl May on Long Speech. Um, this, this problem of safe crossings and non-congestion has existed for most of three decades. It's not a, something that came along in 2007 when somebody noticed it. I was on committees 25 years ago looking at these sorts of things. And so there's a lot more, among some of these members of the audience, there's a lot more history than just this latest traffic and congestion study. This is just the most recent. And it comes at a time when there's been a push for urbanizing of the coast side. And so a lot of us get very suspicious about urban, what look to be us to be urban solutions. Um, over, over the years, uh, there's congestion is in the title of this study. Over the years, congestion on Highway 1 on the coast side has been wherever traffic is brought to a stop. Yep. And uh, that's <laughs> most recently, the most recent one in the mid-coast area that I remember arguing and arguing over was Coronado. And we went several years of meetings and stuff like that, and people predicting dire results and so forth. And it would be even worse if the city of Half Moon Bay hadn't bailed out on making it a four-way thing instead of what is now a three-way intersection here. Um, the uh, new stoplight on, for those of us who live in Montana and Moss Beach, we don't have traffic congestion on Highway 1. Not like they have in El Granada, Half Moon Bay, Pacific. And that's because the traffic is not brought to a stop in those places. And so, this is, a, this is a really tough problem about how to have safe crossings, which I believe you have located the places where they're needed, the general locations where they're needed for this entire stretch of the coast without causing congestion. And some of us have in our history the knowledge that there are actually people at Caltrans who seem to enjoy congestion because this then <laughs> mitigates for the next larger highway, the four-lane highway with the full stops and so on. And this, there, this isn't me making up this story. This happens time and again. And we are now seeing it happen on a stretch in Pacifica of highway from Valimar um, to Rockaway. We're seeing another expansion of that stretch that's completely uncalled for, a denial of any ideas to ease traffic and congestion in that area other than doing what Caltrans wants to do. And we have, so there's a history on the coast side of being suspicious. I think the hybrid lights especially uh, are especially a harsh solution in these places. And I, I see the need for uh, something at those locations. Uh, pardon me. I, by the way, just a, a final note because I know my time's up. I have several other things. But uh, uh, Mission, Mission Street at the north end of Santa Cruz, there are several of these, essentially what you're proposing as a hybrid light solution and they and that's already a congested stretch of road at when our school the college kids and whatever are out there on the weekends and stuff like that they have made it even worse thank you my name is Jim Erickson from El Granada I've uh, submitted some comments so I won't try to repeat those uh, but just to draw your attention to two items first of all at Great Way Oak Cove uh, Supervisor Horsley Oakland was saying, well, he thought that looked pretty good, and it got, in some sense, most of the favorable comments. One feature about that was that was the one first section where you had a very extensive and specific trail to connect that crossing to where people want to go. In the other places, and this is one of the hallmarks of the Highway 1 studies, it was not just about safe crossings, it was about trails to get you to places. So if you would look at the second street intersection, which there's been extensive comments on, there was also, I didn't give this in the diagram I sent to you, a diagram that showed the, the trails you put just in front of the restaurant and along the highway that are needed to make the intersections useful. And there's nowhere in the framework of your comments, certainly not in this meeting, to speak to it. But in part, that's why I believe you're just starting the process. 
And I think if you were to come back and have another meeting and just look at Greenway Old Cove and Second Street, you could have all these people here and probably more with a lot of specific interest, but that's probably the level of detail the public is looking for. I'm Bill Sword, Fleet Committee in one speech. Um, I'll probably run a little counter to what some of the things that you've been hearing. I agree you need a lot of crossings because uh, each, each community is a little bit different and there are kids and elderly that have to cross in each of these communities. So you do need it. But where I do definitely agree is that you're lighting all these intersections or these crossings. Uh, I do think that you kind of discounted the use of a medium. Most of the difficulty in crossing is timing traffic both directions that you can get all the way across. There are always sufficient breaks on one side or the other. Um, even on weekends, it's a matter of getting them to sync up, which they never seem to do. Um, um, on the lighting, have you looked at dark sky requirements? Um, you, you mentioned that you were going to put in medians that you were going to light the medium. That's extremely disruptive to the people living in the community. We are a real community. And, and it really makes a difference. Additionally, when it's very foggy out, those lights hitting the fog make it tougher to see as opposed to the the crossing at Gray Whale Cove, um, I, I, I think is critical at certain points in time, but my concern both there and Surfers Beach is that you get enough people who will constantly be pushing that button to get right. six people go across, then about a two minute break, and then another handful of people. So is there some way of controlling the time to put it out of the land or some sort? Yeah, so There's other questions, but I'll say those right now. I did also think that this was supposed to be a Q&A type of thing tonight. I thought that's the way it was advertised, not yeah. a come send us your stuff and get done it. I mean, right. So okay. it, it would have. I'm John Kakunda. I live in Montana. Um, I want to make three brief comments if I can. Um, I do agree with many prior comments about a left turn acceleration lane coming out of Cyprus going northbound on Highway 1. It's a very simple solution to a, a big problem. They've got one right in front of the airport coming coming out of there going northbound. Very simple, doesn't have to be uh, fancy and it works quite well. Um, center divides. I agree with many comments also. I, Senator, we don't necessarily need a crosswalk in every spot we're talking about. Um, I think, you know, we've met four or five times in as many years now. And I think a lot of the frustration you're hearing tonight is because there were many comments made during those meetings. I was here. Um, there were great suggestions and we're not really seeing those suggestions up on the wall or many of them seem to be deleted or just omitted somehow. And so I feel with everybody here, I'm, I'm grateful that we're having these meetings, um, but like with everyone else, I'm a little frustrated as well. Um, you know, I live here as a pedestrian. I, I'm, I'm afraid as a pedestrian and I'm frustrated as a driver because I drive as well. So we've got to find a balance somehow between those two things where we can get from one place to another by car without running people over or worried about my children getting hit by a car when they're trying to cross over to the beach. Um, lastly, 16th Street. Uh, I, I have to disagree with a prior comment um, that nobody crosses there. I can assure you that many people cross at 16th Street. It is the location of, um, of several prior fatalities um, in the last few years. Uh, people cross there to access the lighthouse. People cross there to access uh, it's the first place they can reach the coastal trail in front of the um, water district. Um, there is a berm there. It's also 50 miles an hour. That's the speed limit, but that's by far the minimum speed that people travel through there. That's People just zoom through there at 65, 70 miles an hour all the time. It is sort of a blind curve, so putting on rectangular flashing signals 
um, at a 77% stop rate is just uh, not good enough, I don't think, if you've got children trying to cross over there. Uh, you would need um, something safer. Uh, there is a berm. Uh, many people had suggested an overpass. There was no risk to losing a view there because the berm already would block any view from the, the, the houses east of there. Um, if this is a matter of budget, if we're operating on a shoestring budget, we can't afford it. I would appreciate the transparency and just let us know if that's the case. Otherwise, I would expect you to be able to put that in. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Fran Pollard of Granada. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, okay. I don't like signals. I've always thought that if we start putting signals everywhere, we're going to become the El Camino Real of the coast side. How many like driving down the El Camino? Uh, so, I really hate signals. And, and um, it will be, uh, let's say, and I don't like those big overhanging ones that you show the multi-signals because we, they look like bridges, so we might as well have bridges across. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And if, if we must have signals, I was thinking about this, how about um, something like the Great Highway, where they're all coordinated, and you can drive, we, you can maybe make them so that we can go 45 miles an hour, or maybe 50 miles an hour down the highway, and they're all coordinated, and you can drive from one end, from Montero to Half Moon Bay without having to stop. That would be wonderful. You'd probably get there in 15 minutes. And, uh, and and they stop automatically, so I don't like the buttons on the on the uh, poles and just single poles, no big fancy overhanging signals, um, and no buttons. Because can you imagine on uh, busy weekends all the kids coming to out of town and pushing the buttons on every every intersection? They, you'd stop traffic constantly. So, so no, no buttons. It'll stop if you if we coordinate the signals, then um, they'll stop automatically, periodically, and everybody crosses at the same time, and we and and that's it. And if we don't have signals um, at all, I mean that's if we have to have signals. But if not, I think I like others prefer the median and. Um, where you can cross one lane at a time. You said it only, it's good for four lanes. Well, this is a highway we're talking about, and, and people are driving. And, and, you know, so now they can go a little bit slower, but it'll wind up getting there a lot sooner. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kevin Stokes, Montero. Um, I'd just like to make one point, really, and that's to add support to, I forget who the gentleman was, um, tunnels. Pedestrian subways will negate all the problems here with congestion, light pollution, the low impact. Um, I know Mr. Horsley said they're uh, cost prohibitive, but if we're going to put dollars in front of public safety, then I think we've got a problem here as well. I know we're a tough crowd here, but thank you for coming. Yes, I'd like to add to that. Second Street. I think I live in Montero, and I think Second Street. We need to have a median, a race median there, so people can cross over. Because I've stood there for at least 15 minutes. I mean, seriously, just to try to get over to go to the beach for a walk. And I also have a problem. Do any of you live on the coast? <laughs> See, I think that's a major problem. I don't think you grasp the traffic we're talking about. And I don't think you grasp people driving 20, 15 miles an hour trying to take pictures, video of the whole side, the whole time. You know, we have, we only have north or south to go to, to go grocery shopping, to get gas, and, and this is a major problem. I mean, we're talking about putting up traffic lights. Why don't you make traffic go the speed limit? And that might help push things along also. You guys just don't understand what it's like to live out here and you have to drive. I mean, it takes sometimes at least 45 minutes to an hour to get to Happening Bay from Ontario on the weekend. Yeah. If you totally forgot to pick something up, I mean, it's just ridiculous. 
I think we need more representation out here, people that really understand what it's like to live out here. I, you treat it like it's urban, and it's not urban. People come out here because it's not. And when you start building it up, that's when everything is going to be disastrous, and they're going to go someplace else. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Walmart. I live in Montero about the last 30 years. Um, I'm late to this conversation. I came here looking for help. I live in Montero. I either go down Sunshine Valley Road or I go across uh, either by the restaurant or, or uh, by the post office area. And I want to go to Half Moon Bay. Over the last 30 years, the traffic has, has increased tremendously. Uh, on sunny weekends, it's stop and go. Otherwise, people are going 70 miles an hour. I'm getting old. All I want to do is cross Highway 1, going left into Half Moon Bay, without risking my life, jump into a suicide lane, or waiting for people for these imaginary gaps to, to align so that I can make a safe enough turn. I know people are against lights. You know, I, I'd like the minimum amount of two, but here's what I need. I, if you'd like to keep the Half Moon Bay economy going for people in Montero Moss Beach going there to shop, uh, we need some safe way to cross the highway to go into Half Moon Bay, that is going from Montero Moss Beach into uh, Half Moon Bay going south. And one last point, uh, a stop sign that allows cars to travel move also would be a more positive way to get people safely across the highway. I know I'm running completely against the general feeling here, but like I say, I'm looking for help to safely cross the highway to go south. Thank you. And I know I already spoke, but when I got here late, I noticed there's a BMW in the reserve parking spot with their headlights on. <laughs> like standing in line to talk. <laughs> Hi, Laura Stein. I live in El Granada and I'm on the Mid Coast Community Council. Um, as I listen, we have three points that need to be balanced. And can you hear now? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have three points that need to um, be balanced. And one of those is um, pedestrian safety. And there we go to coastal ambiance and how it feels here. And then the impact on traffic flow. I mean, that's pretty much everything that I hear being said. Um, I, as you mentioned, the, somebody mentioned that Caltrans um, had to review the different options, and these are the only things that are available. Did I understand that correctly? Uh, so these did go through a Caltrans screening. Uh, Caltrans owns a facility, and so we do have to follow their rules. Um, we really do appreciate all your comments tonight, um, and we'll do our best to um, get a lot of these improvements that don't necessarily comply with the Caltrans requirements through because they're specific to this community, not necessarily the whole state highway system. So there are exceptions, and we're going to go to bat for you guys. I think we, we came into this uh, on the same side as the community here. You know, it was, can we all recognize there is a problem out there with pedestrian safety? Yeah. And that was, that, was, that was the goal, to go out there and try to help pedestrian safety. And that also includes then driver safety, which also then includes traffic congestion. So it all came up to play. You know, and then we went through Caltrans review, and this is kind of where you know, things had started to come out and then we came out to public meeting to get this type of feedback. So I, I you know, I, I, I appreciate all the, all the comments and everything and I think we all do yeah. from that standpoint. But it, it's not us against you, you know, it's really a, a culmination of trying to get this to work and trying to make it safer. But you don't understand not living out here. You don't understand it daily. It's a daily fight for us. It, and, and, and I can understand and it costs that. Time, it's, and time is money. Yes. Sandy. Just one more comment. Um, I had listened to your comments about uh, the medians versus crosswalks and safety. And I had gone to the Federal Highway Administration, it's a federal site, but they have 
pedestrian safety area. And I came up with the opposite information. And so in the next time that you present, it would be interesting to hear, I think someone asked a good question about which, which is safer. Because what I was hearing was that with the um, medians, the pedestrian crashes were uh, reduced by 46%. Um, the delays for motorists, 30% uh, decrease. Um, visibility, of course, is improved. And if there is any night lighting needed, that increased the, um, or decreased the fatalities by like 78%. Um, so if we take that, and then we take the issue of the ambience here, people don't want flashing lights, they don't want those horrible green signs, and maybe I'm just speaking personally. But we want it to be safe. So it looks like medians are really a good option. So um, the other thing that makes me think is, could we have a Caltrans person here? To our next get together so that they can hear directly what the community wants. Are we having fun? <laughs> I just want to make a comment about the Caltrans uh, situation because Caltrans is a state agency, but really they work for us. So That's it's not right. their highway, it's our highway, right. it's all That's of our right. highways. Yes. Um, and the last time Caltrans <laughs> tried to uh, push a highway solution by getting it over the hill, uh, 30 years later we finally got the tunnel that we wanted. So this is a very <coughs> stubborn community and I would suggest that whoever can represent Caltrans or listen to Caltrans, are you from Caltrans? No, I'm not. I don't blame you for not wanting to say yes. <laughs> But uh, I, I do think that uh, somebody ought to send a message back to them that this community does not want uh, the kind of solutions that uh, you propose. Yay. I, I, think we, uh, I think we're hearing loud and clear, and we're going to go back and kind of slow this process down a bit. And uh, I, you know, I hear what you're saying about that. You want the meetings, you don't want the flashing. So we're going to come back, and we'll also see if we can get somebody from Caltrans uh, next time so that... Um, you know, you can address your concerns to that. You guys want to speak yeah. again? Oh. Sure. I just want I, I don't need, I just want to say I had experience with Caltrans before they came into the the hillside here. I caught them grading before they ever had permits. And Caltrans just re refused to answer my questions or return the county, the Mid Coast Community Council, they were just like, That's not my problem. And you know, and that's the problem. They do whatever they want and nothing happens to them. They continue to screw the taxpayers. So I just have one more comment um, and support for the, uh, the gentleman who was talking about the imaginary uh, turning lights. <laughs> um, I would like to emphasize for the record that we need more acceleration lanes onto Highway 1, then we need turning lanes off of Highway 1. And a lot of that has to do with the, the slope of the highway. It dips on either side, and it's much more difficult to get onto Highway 1, especially going to Half Moon Bay, but also going north. So just to highlight that particular point. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the last Okay, this is more quick. I don't want to keep her up too late, so. <laughs> uh, this, this is real fast. Rick Lowland from uh, Miramar. Uh, first of all, one positive thing. I think uh, in spite of, you know, some people saying their things weren't included, I think having all these pictures up here is a great thing. And I think it was good because it helped the people focus seeing a picture here and saying, I don't like this or this, I can put it. Rather than just thinking about it, given a picture, now, now you've got the feedback on that. Uh, two things, that were, or one thing that was mentioned, if we could include in the next one, someone said accident reports by location. I think it's a good thing for the next one. And another one is for ones like uh, the one at Marotta Road in Miramar. Um, if you could include any more details on why that was selected. Um, it seems a little strange in that area, but if you say, oh, well, there's a nursery across the street and 300 people a day across the road, because some of it just likes, you know, it's like, why there? Some of those, that's all. Thanks.
I'm going to make a pitch for Gray Whale Cove. <laughs> because we actually do have, uh, it's starting to go up there. So we do actually have this uh, path that actually takes you to the trail down to the beach. And it's also the Green Valley Trail that will eventually go from here up to the Devil Slide. And somebody said about the, this viewer parking, that's not true. It's actually more parking. We think it's a much more efficient. And if you could, instead of having it come and, well, well, we kind of funnel it into, or at least they funnel into one area to go left or right. So there actually is much more parking. We think it could be much more efficient. And it really is, because of the slide, because of the devil's, uh, because of the, the beef, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of people crossing. But they don't cross, you know, one now and then. It's not a constant. It's, um, if people think, well, I know it is, but it is now already. It just would be a lot safer. Uh, and then somebody talked about uh, the parking lot. I think it's one of the reasons I talked to you, Ladder, about GSD is using that potentially, that area that people park there already, and having that as a more efficient parking area. And, and, and one of the things that people have constantly said to us is that having some kind of a safe crossing at Surfers Beach, and that's why we put it there. But you know, it's, it's it can go. It doesn't. We just, we just okay. We can talk some more about that. But in any case, one of you know one of the things I love about the coast is we all have opinions. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. I appreciate you coming this evening, and uh, we'll go a little slower. Maybe we'll take just a few amount of time and take a look at it again. And so and we'll be around, and if you want, want to ask me individual questions, but I'm going to let our consultants go. So thanks again. Thanks for coming.